If you just unboxed your first PCP air gun and thought, okay, how do I actually put air in this thing without messing it up? Then you're in the right place. In a few minutes, you know exactly which filling method to choose, how to hook it up, and the simple habits to keep your gun safe, dry, and leak free. Hello, I'm Mark Reed. Today we're talking about filling your PCP. So I wanna cover the three ways to fill, the connectors that you'll see, the difference between BSPP and NPT threads, how to keep moisture out, and a safe step-by-step -step fill routine that you can copy. So let's get started with the big picture. A PCP air gun stores high pressure air in a small cylinder. Your manual will list a maximal working pressure, often between 200 and 300 bar, which is about 2,900 to 4,350 PSI. So our job is to get clean, dry air into that cylinder safely. Never use oxygen. Clean, dry air only, please. You'll see a few parts over and over again. A gauge on the gun that shows pressure, a fill port on the gun. Sometimes it accepts a quick disconnect nipple, and sometimes it uses a brand specific fill probe. You'll also see a fill whip or hose with a bleed valve and a gauge, an air source, which could be a hand pump, a portable compressor, or a high pressure carbon fiber tank. Okay, let's talk about the three ways to fill your air gun in a practical way. Number one, hand pump. So think about a heavy duty bicycle pump that can reach PCP pressures. What are the pros? Definitely the lowest cost. It's portable, no electricity. Cons, it's a workout and you'll need a cool down brake so that the air stays cooler and drier, and you do too. It's also great for smaller cylinder type guns, lower pressures, or if you're an occasional shooter. Number two, portable compressor. So portable compressors plug into a wall or they use a car battery to compress air directly into the gun. They can also be used to fill smaller type cylinders. So what are the pros? It's fast and it's independent. You can fill at home or at the range. Cons, you have to pay attention to cooling and filtration. So budget compressors especially need good moisture filters and short duty cycles. They're perfect for people who shoot often. Number three, a carbon fiber or SCBA tank with a fill whip. This is gonna be a large carbon fiber tank filled either at a dive shop or by your own portable compressor to around 4,500 PSI. The pros are it's extremely fast top-offs when you fill up your gun. It's very convenient in the field. Cons, you need a place to fill it or you need to fill it yourself. You'll also need to track hydro test dates and there's an upfront cost. It's ideal for range days and anyone who wants quiet, quick fills without needing electricity. Okay, let's talk connectors and threads and how they work. And this is the part that confuses nearly everyone at first, so I'll do my best to make it simple. You'll deal with two separate connection points. The first is the quick disconnect at the gun, and that's usually the foster connection. So you wanna think of um, a click-on type fitting. The gun usually has the male piece called a nipple and the hose has a female piece called a coupler. And you'll push the coupler onto the nipple until it clicks. Inside the coupler, there's a small O-ring and that O-ring makes the airtight seal. There are also little steel balls that lock into a groove on the nipple so it can't pop off. So to remove it the right way, you wanna close down your air source, bleed the line of all the pressure until it reaches zero, then pull back the coupler sleeve and it should just slide right off. It's important though, never put thread tape on the tip of a foster nipple. That tip is not a screw joint. 
and it seals inside the coupler with that O-ring, so avoid the tape. Now, some guns don't have a Foster nipple. They use a fill probe instead. And what is a fill probe? So a probe is a small, smooth stem with two small O-rings on it, and it slides into the gun's fill port and seals inside the port. Now, the back end of the probe has threads on it, so you can attach it to your hose or to an adapter. And most probes use a thread called g 18 BSPP on the back, and I'll explain those letters in a second. So you also want to keep a few O-rings around for your probe and also keep dust caps on both ends. A little single nick on a probe O-ring will make a hissing sound and it wastes air. All right, now, the threaded connection behind the coupler or on the probe, the fill probe, is BSPP versus NPT designations. And this is where most leaks and broken parts come from. So try to listen closely to this. Behind the coupler of the fill probe, there's a threaded joint where it screws into the hose block. And there are two thread systems in our hobby. They look alike, but they seal differently. The first is BSPP. It's often labeled G18 or 18 BSPP. Now, these are parallel threads. They're straight, not tapered. And you'll see most of them on air gun probes, mini gauges, and a lot of uh, other air gun specific parts. They seal not on the threads. They seal at a flat face using an O-ring or a thin bonded washer that's sometimes called a dowdy washer. So what this means for you is you'll want to tighten the fitting until the faces meet and then let the washer or the O-ring do the sealing. Do not wrap the threads, the, the, the threaded part with tape expecting it to stop a face leak because tape doesn't help a face seal. All right, now, the second type is NPT, and it's often labeled 18-27 NPT. Now, these are tapered threads. The male piece is narrower at the tip. It narrows down. And you'll see them on many U.S. hoses and fill whips and, and also some paintball parts they seal on the threads themselves as they wedge together. And so what that means for you is you'll want to put two to three wraps of Teflon type tape on the male NPT threads only. You want to wrap clockwise so it doesn't unwrap and you'll snug it down and stop. Don't muscle it, okay? So how are you going to tell which type you have? Well, first of all, you can read the markings. It's either going to be G18 or BSPP which both mean BSPP, 18-27 MPT, or just MPT means MPT. You'll also want to look at the shape. MPT male threads are tapered. BSPP male threads look straight. You'll also look for a sealing face. The BSPP ports have a flat surface where a washer or O-ring sits, while MPT ports usually don't. And you'll also use some context. The probes and European parts are often BSPP, and many U.S. hoses are MPT. So why should you even care about all this? Because mixing them up causes problems, that's why. So if you try to force a BSPP part into an MPT port, you can crack the metal. If you put tape on a BSPP face seal, it'll still leak. But if you skip the tape on the MPT joint, it will leak too. So when you get this right, your setup is going to be safe, dry, and drama free. Okay, I'm going to try to give you the two common adapter paths in plain English. Okay, so you'll see probe to foster. That means your probe's back, fill probe's back, is BSPP. And so for the adapter, you want to buy a probe to foster adapter that matches the BSPP on the probe side and gives you a foster nipple on the hose side. 
then the hose's female foster coupler clicks on as usual. So make sure the back thread of that coupler matches your hose block, either BSPP or MPT. You'll also see BSPP to MPT. So if your hose is MPT, but your accessory is BSPP or the other way around, you'll buy an adapter that literally says female G18 BSPP to male 18 MPT in the direction that you need. So I hope that makes some sense. Uh, also remember the foster is the click on tip at the gun. BSPP or MPT is the screw joint hidden behind the coupler or the fill probe. Okay, next let's talk moisture and filtration. We want to keep things dry. Compressing air makes heat and moisture. And moisture inside your air gun is a very bad day. So it can corrode parts and mess with your regulator. You just don't want it. So here's how we keep things dry. We use an inline filter or a desiccant tube on the compressor output. You want to change or recharge the desiccant when the color change shows that it's wet. You'll also want to take cool down breaks. A slower fill keeps the air cooler and gives moisture a chance to drop out in the filter instead of in your gun. And you also want to drain moisture from any moisture separators as the maker recommends. Okay, I'll give you a safe fill procedure and you can copy this. It's a step-by-step -step routine that if you follow every time, you'll be in great shape. So number one, we want to inspect. We want to check O-rings on the fill probe or on the foster coupler. We want to check that the gauges look normal and fittings aren't loose anywhere. Number two, bleed the system. You want to make sure that the bleed valve on your hose is open so that the line is at zero. Number three, connect everything together. So for foster, you want to push the female coupler onto the gun's nipple until it clicks. You want to tug on it to confirm that it's locked. For a probe, fill probe, insert the probe fully into the port of the gun. And you'll want to seat it gently. You don't want to like be wobbling it around. That's a bad idea. Next, you want to close the bleed valve and then start your fill slowly. You want to crack the tank valve open slowly or turn on your compressor and then watch the gun's gauge rise gently. You want to stop at the gun's rated pressure. Never exceed the manufacturer limit. Next, you want to shut the source of compressed air down. Turn the compressor or off or close the tank valve down. Next, you'll bleed the line all the way down to zero so there's no pressure within the line. And then you can disconnect. Pull back the foster sleeve or remove the probe and you can then cap your probe to keep the dust off and then you're done. Okay, which method should you choose? Here's an easy decision tree. Choose a hand pump if you just shoot occasionally or your cylinder is small or you want the lowest cost and maximum portability. Good choice. Next, choose a por portable compressor if you want to shoot often, you want independence, and you don't want a pump. That's also a good idea. But just add good filtration and respect its duty cycle. Take good care of it. Next, choose a carbon fiber or SCBA tank. If you love fast, quiet top-offs, and if you have a place to fill it, like a dive shop, or you use a compressor yourself to fill it. Okay, so now you understand the three fill methods, the connectors that are used, the thread types, and a safe routine. If this has cleared up all the mystery, grab the free PCP fill setup checklist below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And thanks as always for watching. Until next time.